In just one day, aviation history was changed forever. Ground staff said goodbye to the aircraft in Boston, closed the door, and that was the last anybody saw of them. I work closely with cabin crew and with our pilots, and, you know, I just think, well, it could have been them. It just totally changed the whole thing about travelling. Security had changed. Yeah, it was everything just changed in 24 hours. September the 11th, it, it had a tremendous impact on flying, people's perceptions of flying, uh, especially in the, the few weeks after September 11, people weren't travelling. Following months of fear and uncertainty, Heathrow is buzzing. Passengers are back, and famous faces can be spotted. Remember what you like about travel and reject the rest. Because if you concentrate on what you don't like, you're going to be in misery. I like airports, I like travel, I, I like that whole world. I still find it quite exciting, you know? As well as celebrities, the eccentrics have returned. We've got him going. He's not going to stop. Heathrow's collection of travelling entertainers seem irresistibly drawn to the Cyprus Airways desk of Maria Dimitriou. And it's not just musicians who will go to any lengths to get noticed. Heathrow for 16 years. Where did that come from? I think I would go absolutely do lally if you put me in an office, nine to five, in front of a computer and wear one of those little ear pierce things around you and answer phones and hear that little bleep in your ear and, and straight away you've got to answer the phone. Forget it. Celebrities have been thin on the ground since September the 11th, but today Concord is back in action and its first paying passengers are waiting to board. We're back in the old routine today. It's been a gap of 15 months. It's a flight we always used to watch. It's the flight the celebrities go on. Um, and it's back, and so we've got our yeah. job back. <laughs> Purpose in life, I think. That's it. We've actually got something to focus on. Celebrities are the lifeblood of Steve and Russell, and they've been starved of stories, so they are hungry for anything or anyone they can get. Notice Sir Cliff Richards has just popped in there now. I don't know if he's on Concord or not, if he's just travelling. It's a bit early for Los Angeles. Despite Sir Cliff being a regular at Heathrow, during the 30 years Steve's been working at the airport, he's only interviewed him four times. Thanks, Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. You're on Concord today. Uh, yeah. Are you any way apprehensive about travelling? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed in my heart and head. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I was going to come back in October and there was me ready to go. Mm -hmm. But obviously things happened that stopped all of that, but yeah. um, it's just been a great emblem, hasn't it, of the British flying, really. With over 60 million passengers flying in and out of Heathrow each year, security is a vital and necessary part of everyday life at the airport. The Metropolitan Police at Heathrow have recently set up a special task force working closely with the Immigration Service. The Human Smuggling Unit tracks down dealers in false documents and investigates anyone trying to enter or leave Britain unlawfully. We're going out of Terminal 4. There's an individual there that's been stopped at transfers by airport security, basically. Plain clothes officers PC Graham Cox and DC Dennis Griffiths have been summoned by British Airways. A passenger about to board a flight to Canada seems to be carrying a forged passport. Every time there's a breach of security or somebody attempts to breach security, well, they're not doing it for the good of their health. They've got a motive, they've got an agenda. And the most important thing that we can do is do our best to find out just what that agenda is. Hello there. I'm PC Cox from Heathrow Airport Police Station. Done so. Basically, you've tried to fly on a British Airways flight to Canada today, yes. and when you arrived at the gate, you presented this to the security staff. 
OK? So basically, you've been arrested on suspicion of attempted deception and possession of a counterfeit document. OK. This gentleman's uh, presented this passport. There's various security features on a passport. Some of them aren't present. So at the moment, we've arrested him on suspicion of possession of a counterfeit document and suspicion of attempted deception. After £17 million worth of safety modifications, Concord is ready to make its first transatlantic flight with paying passengers. For everyone on the ground, it's a tense moment. How many times have we seen a plane take off? Hundreds, hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Today it's going down the runway. Yeah. That's right. And you get that feeling yeah, in the stomach. I know. Well, I, I said in the office, I've got to go and watch it take off. Yeah. I don't know why, but it just felt as if, yeah. as if I had to see it. Qantas has been working at Heathrow for 28 years. I think from about the age of 10 I used to cycle to Heathrow, watch planes taking off, and that's where it all started really. I ended up working here, which is quite sad, I suppose. I haven't been on it, but I'd like to one day. I haven't even looked in it, actually. I've never even set foot across a threshold, but I will one day. What will happen now, we're going to take you to the police station and we're going to investigate the matter. We're going to Heathrow Airport Police Station. The man arrested for trying to leave the country on what looks like a forged passport is now in the hands of PC Graham Cox. I don't think he's very happy, but what you've got to remember is he's probably paid quite a lot of money for the passport and the tickets. I mean, on average, you're talking between two and five thousand pounds. Heathrow Police Station sits just outside the airport perimeter fence. Its ten detention cells are nearly always full. The Immigration National Forgery Section have confirmed the passport is indeed a forgery. At last, we've got a good one. Well, yeah, a real one. Yeah, a real one at last. <laughs> a real false one. Yeah. Exactly. And this is a document that's produced on behalf of the British government. It's got to be good quality. And this just isn't. You've got blue lines there going over the photograph. They're thick lines. There's also evidence that the passport has been pulled apart and restitched. Um, you see the laminate here, where it overlaps from the bio page onto this page. It's thick and it's coarse. It's not stuck down properly. It's just not very good. I don't know what he's paid for this, but whatever it is, it's not a very good deal. As the police have no idea who the suspect really is, they must search him and his possessions thoroughly. Have you got a lift chain? Yes. What's on the end of it, please? Luckily for the police, the man does seem to be carrying another form of identity, a Nigerian ID card, with a completely different name on it. Things are not looking good. As night falls, duty manager John Cull is waiting in the wing. 